Hey, what's going on beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy and today I'm going to be doing an updated deck tech on my Tassiger EDH deck tech. And I actually realized I had asked on some video, I, I can't remember which, I was like, oh, like, did you guys want to see like an updated deck tech? And some people were like, yeah, absolutely. And I realized I thought I totally did this video, like, honestly, more recently, but I honestly think the deck tech, like, I remember building Tassiger, hold up. What is, this is Fate Reforged, right? So when whenever he came out, like the year that he came out, that January is like when I built Tassiger. So like, I think he came out in like September or so. And I built him like a couple months later in January, if that makes sense. Um, but anyways, so I've had this deck for a while and it's gone through a ton of tweaks. My Tassiger deck is different from a lot of other Tassiger decks that you'll see. This is a very creature heavy deck. I run like 34 creatures. And um, basically I... It it has a lot of tutors in the deck, which is super awesome, and I really love that. And um, it has, like, quite a bit of removal, which is really fun. Um, this deck is not at 100% where I want to be in terms of, like, the mana base. I don't have a lot of crazy expensive cards in here. Like, I don't have fetch lands and chalk lands, as you'll see. Those are something that they're on my list. I want to get them at some point. Um, it just hasn't really happened yet, to be completely honest. Um, a lot of this deck I've really have tweaked over time. I'm at a place where I'm very happy with the deck and particular like I have a lot of new cards in here that I actually haven't really gotten the chance to test but so far for the most part I'm very happy with this deck and I'm really excited to film a deck a, an updated deck and this deck has gone through a lot of tweaks. If you want to see what my deck looked like whenever I originally filmed that deck tech I will list it in the down bar below. Um, but yeah this is Tess the girl. I got the foil promo which makes me really happy and yeah. Alright, so the first thing we're going to start off with the mana base. Oh, also, I'll list the deck, like, the list in the down bar below if you want to follow it on Tapped Out. Uh, how many islands is this? I have six islands in the deck for my basics. Uh, then I have five swamps. Funny, these are actually my two favorite arts. Like, I love, these are my two favorite swamp arts. So I have five of those. And then I have the most forest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine. I really, really love this. The Johnny Avon loans. Oh, they're so freaking pretty. Uh, the deck has a lot of, like, mana dorks that are um, green. So I have a lot more green symbols. Uh, then I have some specialty lands. I believe I run 35 in total. The first I run is Alchemist Refuge, which I just really love this card. And I find it really strong. Then I run Ash Barons. I want a lot of stuff in my graveyard. So I thought Ash Barons would be a great thing to do. Also, I have some like things that are like double mana symbols that require double mana symbols and Ash Baron's a really good card to get that for me so I'm really excited about that. Uh, then I have Bajookabog because I just feel like this is a really good card to have and if I'm running black in EDH I'm running this card so yeah. Uh, Command Tower because duh. <laughs> uh, this is a new card actually for me. I filmed this in my July haul. This is a Dakmore Salvage. It's a dredger. I haven't actually drawn this card yet, so I can't really speak to how powerful this card is. But I'm so I just think this is a really sweet card, and I'm very excited to test that when I like finally draw it. Uh, then I have Evolving Wilds. Funny, this is actually my favorite Evolving Wilds art. It's really, really pretty. This is a very, very pretty foil. Um, yep. And then I have Ghost Quarter because you know people run crazy car crazy lands in EDH, and I want to make sure I have a way to deal with that. Um, then I have Myriad Landscape. This is actually another new card in there. I realized I really wanted more lands to go in my graveyard. I want things to just be in my graveyard so I can recur them, but particularly lands so I can delve them away, um, to cast Tassiger and things like that. So Myriad Landscape seems like a really good card. Then I have Opulent Palace, pretty basic Rogue's Passage, which I have in here pretty specifically for one card, which I will talk about when I get to it. Then I have Temple of Deceit, Temple of Mystery, Temple of the False God, Terramorphic Expanse, pretty straightforward, and then I have Warped Landscape, another new card for me. Um, I'm very excited to see how this card plays out. It's now getting into the rest of the deck. That was the mana base. Like I said, I'm very certain off the top of my head it's 35 lands. I tweaked the deck, but I had to charge my camera battery, so it's been like a spacing time in between when I, when I, like, finish the deck. Um, like I put it on tapped out, um, versus like me filming it, so I'm pretty sure it's 35. That's kind of like my sweet spot. That's kind of like my number, I would say. I'm actually gonna move this up a little bit. 
Um, okay, then I have one Planeswalker in this deck, and to be honest, I really don't know why I don't have Liliana Vest in this deck. I think I had them, and I, I don't know if I've traded mine away. I may actually have one, but like I said, I, I'm very, I've done a, I've done quite a bit of tweaking as of late, so I don't want to tweak more because I'd rather just see how the deck plays out and see what cards aren't working, especially like the new cards I just want to see. But Soren Markov is a new addition, and I just really love this card. I've always really liked this card, and I find it's a really good addition. Um, it's very easy for me to get this card because I have so many ways of tutoring for it, plus getting it back from the graveyard. It's really good when you get to late stages the game and like you're playing on like a four player game but it's down to you and one person and they are at a high life total you could just make them be at 10 and then kill them with a couple of hits from some of your creatures so I just find this card really really strong and I'm very glad that I have Soren in this deck definitely a really good addition I don't know if other people's Tassic or decks run them but I know I do and all of it uh all right cool let's talk about artifacts uh I run six I'm sorry Seven, I'm bad at math. Uh, the first is Birthing Pod. I think this is just kind of an essential thing um, in this deck because I don't care if things get sacrificed. I want a tutor for, like, better things. Like, I want to get away, like, my mana dork and then get something, you know, much better. So this card is just really, really solid, and I'm very glad I have it in the deck. Uh, then I have Chromatic Lantern because, you know, reasons. Uh, I Then I have Perilous Vault. Uh, really, really love this card. I've talked about this before. This is like my favorite board wipe, to be honest. I just really like it. All right, then we have Skull Clamp, which is such a good card in this deck because I have so many things that have one toughness, and then I just kill it, and then I draw two cards. Like, this card is just so good. I Like, I always feel so much of an added advantage whenever I have Skull Clamp on board. I just freaking love that card. Uh, Soul Ring. Duh. <laughs> then we have Swiftfoot Boots because I... Just, yeah, so the boots. Uh, Alright, and then Vidalcanori. I just really love this card. And having Flash just honestly makes this deck so great. Like, I found, like, just... Oh my god, I just... I love this. I love this card. This card is so good. Okay, uh, now let's talk about enchantments. I have four enchantments in the deck. The first is Animate Dead. This is one of, like, the most underrated EDH cards, in my opinion. I don't know about where y'all live and what decks people play around you but I feel like I don't know anyone else in any of my playgroups that run this card in any of their decks and this card is just so powerful you can just mill over whatever or like someone makes you discard something or whatever the situation is and you have like this big dumb thing in your graveyard or someone else's graveyard and you could just cast it for two mana like this card is just busted it is a little susceptible to enchantment removal because if you remove the enchantment like that creature does go away but like who cares this card's amazing I love it uh, then I have Dead Bridge Chant. I really love this card. I've been impressed with this card for like a really long time. It mills you 10 um, and then you just get something back even if it's not a creature. Like even though the majority of the deck like is creatures, it doesn't matter. You still get that card to your hand which is just really really good. Um, I'm a huge fan. I love Dead Bridge Chant. I've loved that card for a really long time and that's been in there for a while. Uh, this is a new card, um, Pernicious Deed. I figured this was really good. I love the fact that it's three mana. I like the fact that it can just stay on board and I can just get this back with so many different things. Um, I just never kind of really had one and I always kind of forgot about this card. Like I was always, it was on my li like mental list, but I never wrote it down. So finally I, I got this card because I remembered and I really enjoy it. Um, or like I'm, I'm sure I will enjoy it when I get the chance to cast it. This is another card that um, my friend Travis plays with a bunch of like older magic cards because he was playing magic you know a while back and this is a card that I just think is so good and I, I've never just seen this card before. So it's one mana and you pay two life to return to a creature from your graveyard to your hand. I love that this is an a tap ability so I can just do it as many times as I really want. Um, this is new. I'm totally testing it out. I haven't gotten a chance to draw it yet so I don't really know how it plays out but uh, so far that card seems really solid. Uh, Alright let's talk about sorceries. We have 11 sorceries, and the first one is Demonic Tutor, the best art for Demonic Tutor, I will say. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot to say with this. This is one of my, like, cards that I am most happy that are in my collection. Like, I'm just, I love having this card in my collection, and I'm just, like, this is a card, like, I will never, ever part with. I just love this card, and I'm so happy that I have it. Uh, the next card is Diabolic Intent. I, I've actually put this card in a back when I opened this in Battle Bond, and I just 
haven't ever drawn it, so to be honest, I don't know how it plays out, but I think it seems good. I like the fact that you sack a creature because then it goes to the graveyard, and then you could just tutor for anything and you don't have to reveal it. So it's pretty much demonic tutor, but it's like the literally it's just demonic tutor, but you sack a creature, which you literally don't care about. So all around this card just seems like it fits the theme of the deck so well because you want creatures in your graveyard. Um, so yeah, this card just seems really good. Um, then we have a Fade Into Antiquity. I actually really love this card. Um, I feel like not a lot of people know about this card or always ask me why I don't run other things. But to be completely honest, I think that the Exile is just really important in this. And a lot of other artifact and enchantment removal, unfortunately, just um, destroy. And so I really wanted the Exile in there. So that's why I run that. Um, then I have In Garrick's Wake. This is a lot of mana and I totally understand that. But... To be honest, like, I just really love the fact that this is all creatures and planeswalkers you don't control. I've blown so many people out of the water with this card before, which is really good. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I like it. Then we have Life's Finale. This card, to be honest, will just be switched out with a, um, with a Damnation. I just have to buy an- I only have one Damnation, and it's set aside for Modern, so, like, I- I think Paul actually has it right now. I think he put it in something. Um, so anyways, I need to get another Damnation. That's on the list. It's just not priority. Um, but yeah. Okay, then we have Ponder, just for some extra card advantage. I also just really love this art. Um, this is like my favorite art, the Laura one one. Then we have Ponder. All right, then we have Temporal Trespass. This card is really, really strong. It does look like a lot of mana on the outside, but you can delve away those cards that you don't want. Take an extra turn. A lot of times when you cast this, you just win the game the next turn because there's a couple of ways of killing people. But uh, yeah. Uh, then we have Treasure Cruise. Oh, just, this is just one of my favorite magic cards of all time. I always feel so good right after I cast Treasure Cruise. Like, I just feel like I cast this card and I'm like, I'm always going to be in a good position, you know? Like, card's so great. This is actually a new card um, in my collection, Traverse the Uvenwald. I realized with the amount of tutors, I actually just don't have this card in there. Um, to be honest, I think the tutoring for anything is great for one. I'm sorry, a basic land is really great. But then if you just have Delirium, you know, you get a creature or a land. Like, I just think this card is really, really strong. I think now that I have all, like, the specialty lands, I think the first ability... Oh, no, I'm so sorry. It is a basic land. My bad, my bad. Um, but yeah, I just really like this card. Um, I haven't gotten the chance to draw it yet, but I do really like it. And then we have Unexpected Results, The Last Sorcery. Um, I've always really loved this card. I feel like a lot of people want me to just cut this card because it's theoretically there probably could be something better, but I love this card and I will just never really take it away from this deck. I just think it's too fun. All right, let's get into instants. We have seven. So the first is Blue Sun's Zenith. Um, you know, this was a card, like, this is just a good card. Like, I, I just, I really just wanted to run it. I mean... I, I don't really think I, there's a whole lot to say there. I just really wanted to run that card. And then I have Brainstorm because who doesn't like card advantage? What I really like too about this is like you can put two cards back and then mill them with Tassiger, which I just think is like so good. So I think Brainstorm particularly is just like really great in this deck. Uh, then we have Dig Through Time. I mean, like obviously this card is great. Uh, Factor Fiction. I really love Factor Fiction. I love the fact that it's they go into the graveyard. A lot of times I find with cards, like, the card seems really good, but then I'm like, damn, like, it doesn't put it in the graveyard. It puts it on the bottom of the library, but Factor Eviction puts them on the graveyard, which is great. So, like, honestly, it's kind of like you can't really go wrong. Like, if they give you a pile, you have it to your hand, but you just have ways of getting it back from your graveyard, so you don't really care. Uh, Plasm Capture. I wanted a little bit of a safety net. I know there's a lot of Tassiger decks that run way more counter spells, and I personally prefer, like, just straight removal, um, I don't really know why. I've just always really liked Plasm Capture, though. It's, like, probably my favorite counter spell. Um, I love the fact that it just gives you mana. Like, what I think was so great about this, too, is, like, if you literally don't have any cards in your hand, which is probably unlikely because you do have quite a bit of card draw on this deck, you honestly can just activate Tassiger. You could just cast Tassiger and then just activate him a bunch of times, which is great, so... 
Uh, yeah, I like that card. Uh, then I have Reality Shift. This is a new card, actually. I it, Again, it was always one that I wanted to get. I just always forgot. Like, I never wrote the card down. Now I've, I'm a lot better about that. And I actually write the card down the name of cards that I want. But this is a really sweet card. You exile anything and then they man. Uh, it's just creature, but they exile any creature and they manifest. You don't really care about the manifest. I think for two mana instant speed, this is just a great card. Um, and I'm very excited to have that card in my collection. And the last I have is Sultai Charm. I really like this card. I love the versatility. You can destroy a monocolor creature, destroy artifact or enchantment, or you can draw two and then discard a card. Like all of those things are just so great. And I love that you have um, the flexibility. I think the one I use the most is actually the second ability, but I love the fact that this is a removal card. So yeah. All right, guys, are you ready for the creatures? I'm, I'm ready. There's 34. And this is to me like always the best part is like, let's talk about the creatures. Okay. Uh, acidic slime. Yeah, I love this card. I've loved this card for a very, very long time. It's a great body. You destroy basically a lot of different types of things, and it's just, this card is just great. Like, there's really not a whole lot to say. It's pretty straightforward. I love that card. Um, then we have Baleful Strix. God, this card's great. Goes great with Skull Clamp. Um, draws you a card. It is a great blocker. It's a great cheap creature to put in your graveyard. You could just play it, block with it. Like, it goes to the graveyard and you get advantage. Like, it just, this card is great. I really, really like it. Um, then we have Bane of Progress. I think this card is just really, really essential. I mean, you do have artifacts and enchantments and stuff that sometimes you are bummed to let go of, but a lot of times if you're getting this, you're playing against a very artifact or enchantment heavy deck, and, like, you're, the cards you're getting rid of are way better than you getting rid of, like, your soul ring or something like that. Like, you don't care at that point, so. Bane of Progress is a really, really great removal card. This is a new card that I am testing out called Bane of the Living. Um, it is a morph. I have another morph in here that we're going to get to in a little bit. Den Protector. Everyone knows that I run Den Protector, and everyone knows... If it's a morph, it's Dem Protector with me, but I really wanted to get a morph so that I could trick people and people actually wouldn't know which one it is. Um, I think this card is really good. I like that it's a removal spell and I love that it's a creature because, again, there's a creature that really, really cares about um, that creatures in the graveyard, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, so, yeah, I just think this card is really sweet. It just seems really good so far and I'm definitely excited to draw it. Coiling Oracle, card's great. I mean, it just does everything, gives you a little bit of card advantage. It's a 1-1, goes with Skull Clamp. Got a whole lot to say, card's great. Uh, then we have Courser of Crufix. This is such a staple card for me. I just kind of run it in like all my green decks because I just feel like you can't really go wrong with this card. It just does so many things. It gives you card advantage, it gains you life. Like, I don't really have like any other life gain in this deck, so this card just does the job. Uh, then we have Deadeye Navigator. We do have our infinite combo in this deck as an alternate win condition. I don't want to say alternate. Like, this just is a win condition. Uh, it's not the first win condition that I go to. I only do the win condition if I am in a desperate situation where I need to. Um, I, like, if I don't, I'm gonna die. That's how I pretty much decide if I'm going to tutor for my win condition or not. Um, yeah. And then we have my man, Deathbringer Regent. Again, I love the fact that this is a creature. A lot of times, like, you'll see in this deck, like, I run, if if there's a creature version of something and then just, like, a sorcery or an instant, I'm gonna want to run the creature version. So I love that this is a, a board wipe. Uh, you're playing EDH, the chance of there being five or more creatures on board is, is just super high. You can just blow so many people out with this. Mention it, but yeah, Dem Protector. I love this card. Um... Uh, there, just, this card is so good. I love it. I love the fact that it's a morph. You can, you know, do its whole morph thing and then unmorph it whenever you need to. And then you're left with, you know, uh, it's got the plus one, plus one counter. So you're left with the three, two, which is definitely not bad. Uh, yeah, I love this card. I just, I'm known for that card. It's one of like <laughs> my signature cards. Elvish Visionary, super straightforward. Card's great. Synergize with Skull Clamp. Love it. Eternal Witness. I mean, duh. Like I had to be running this card, obviously. Um, Barhaven Elf. I like this card. The land comes into the play tapped. And it's a 1-1 Skull Clamp. Card's good. Green Warden of Marasa. I remember when this card came out and I was like, I'm gonna put this card in Tassigar. Like, there's literally no questions. Uh, it is just so good. Like, oh my god. Green Warden of Marasa is really just one of, like, the best cards. A lot of people refer to it as a double eternal witness and they're absolutely right. This card's amazing. Okay, Kessie Cage Breakers, one of the win conditions in the deck that I was mentioning. Um, yeah, I mean, like, 
this card is so good. I there's the, like when I talked about Rogue's Passage earlier, that's why I put Rogue's Passage in the deck because I wanted it to go with um with Kissing Cage Breakers. I just love this card. I really do. You do not care about creatures in your graveyard. You have so many ways of getting this card. That's the reason that um what's the card called? Swiftfoot Boots is in the deck too, so that you can activate the ability. This card just kills people and it's beautiful. I love it. The next card is Mole Drifter. Mole Drifter just kind of does everything you want. I love the fact that it's Evoke. You just evoke it and then you're like, cool, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I get to draw two cards and you have a creature in your graveyard for your Kessig. You can recur it with other things. Like, this card is just overall great. I love Mole Drifter. Uh, and then we have Mystic Snake. <sighs> yes, Mystic Snake. This deck makes me so happy. I'm like so happy to like share this with you guys. Mystic Snake is just a great card, really. I mean, it's, and it's a creature. Again, you know, I could run another board, a room, yeah, I could run another counter spell, but it's like I'd rather have the creature for things like Kessig. Uh, and things like Dead Bridge Tan and stuff. Um, Oracle of Moldiah, oh my god. Okay, this is a card that I am like so happy I own. Like, this is a card that I really do need more copies of for my decks, but like, it's just so great. It gives you so much advantage, and I just love it. Oracle of Moldiah is great. Uh, Paragon Drake, not a whole lot to say, goes with the infinite combo. And then we have this boy, and oh man, oh, this baby. This card's a house, uh, Razakath. I remember when I first looked at the the text on this card, and I was like, this card is going into Hassiger so hard. I remember, I don't even remember where I saw it. I saw it in someone's, like, demon deck or something, and I was like, I need this card. Um, and it's, I think, a, like... You know, sometimes, like, cards just, like, go by the wayside and people, like, forget about them. I feel like it's this card, but this card is just so good. Like, I love that you don't tap it. It's a huge body. This card, you can just swing at a couple times with someone and they're probably dead. Um, it is another creature, just note. Another creature, so just pay attention to that. You can't sacrifice him. But, or overall, I just, I love this card. Okay, then we have Reclamation Sage. This card's a house. I mean, you destroy something, you're left with the 2-1, goes with Skull Clamp. Great card to recur. Overall, yes, love this card. Uh, Rune, Scarred Demon. I haven't been drawing this card recently, which is so upsetting, because it's one of the Tudor engines in the deck, and it's like a 6-6 six, six flyer. It dies, you recur it, you get to tutor again. Like, oh, that's just living the dream, guys. Like, this card is just great. I love it. Sakura Tribe Elder. Yeah, I love that this is, like, just sack immediately. Like, you don't even have to worry about your ways of... Other means of sacrificing it to a Ghost of Griever, it just does that on its own. Like, hello, yes, card's great. Um, and then we have Cedar Wayfinder. A lot of people thought that I should cut this card from the deck. Uh, I really like it. Again, it's a 1-1, one -one. it goes with Skull Clamp, um, and it just mills four, which is just such a, like, it, that just does so much. Like, I just think that's super important. I'm a huge fan of that card. Seed Born Muse. I am so happy that I have this card. We opened some of these in Battle Bond, and it's just so good. You know, this with Alchemist Refuge is like a build your own profit. I'm just, this card's great. Then we have Sheldred. This is one of Paul's least favorite magic cards. Uh, I love it. It is so good. So not only do you get to bring a creature back every turn, but it's a 6-6 six, six with Swamp Block, and then each player, I'm sorry, each opponent has to sack a creature. Like, she's so good. Oh my god, I'm so happy that I own this card. The card is great. Uh, Shriek Maw, love it. Love that it's got Evoke, very similar to Moldrifter. It does a thing, it just throws a thing. Um, and then, you just like, for two mana for that, and to put that in your graveyard is so strong. Uh, then we have Sedisi. Oh, man. Okay. I love her. She's so good. She exploits something, which is great. And you get to tutor for something. And then if you don't exploit herself, you can just, um, you just have, like, a 4-6. Like, you're left with a 4-6 Death Toucher. Like, she just literally does everything that you want her to. She's great. Solemn Simulacrum. Sad Robot. Yeah, again, I love him. I He just, he's so versatile. He does so many things. He gets you a land, he draws you a card. Like, yes, 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 yes. Then we have Spore Frog, a card that I'm testing out. I don't really know how I feel about it right now, but I think this is like a good, like kind of safety net card. Um, I like that because you can just like recur it. So as many times as you really need to. 
Uh, then we have Sylvan Ranger, which I mentioned in my haul that I actually haven't seen this card before. This is like a new card to me, but I really like it. Um, I love it. It does go to your hand, but it's a one one goes with Skull Clamp. You want cards in your graveyard, all those things that I've been saying before. So yeah. Okay, then we have Venser. I, yeah, I just think Venser is, like, really good in this deck. I love that he bounces, like, a spell, so he's really good for, like, a board wipe that your opponent, like, tapped out to do or any kind of situation like that. Um, or you can just return a permanent, like, something that is really problematic. It is, uh, it can be anything. So what I like is that it can be your thing or it can be your opponent's thing. I really love the versatility on Venser. What else? Pretty straightforward card. I have the best art ever, the Rebecca Gwai art. Very pretty. Um, and then we have, okay, Yavi Maya Dryad? Dry? Am I saying that wrong? I feel like I always say that name wrong. But anyways, this art is really pretty. I think this is a card that not a lot of people actually know about. Um, it is pretty much very similar to Wood Elves. It is double green. It's a 2-1. It's got Forest Walk, and it comes into the forest uh, tapped under target player's control, so you can give someone a forest, but I never do that. I just have always have it enter under my control. And I just really like this card. And the art is very beautiful. Again, that's done by Rebecca Guay. And then we have the last creature is Yavi Maya Granger. This is a card that not a lot of people know about and people need to because it's amazing. It has Echo, which a lot of times, Echo, you don't want it. But in this deck, it's perfect because you want creatures in your graveyard. Um, Yeah, it's great. So yeah, guys, that is it for my Tassiger EDH deck. I think at some point I will go through and film my other decks that I want to do updated versions of. Like I have Omnoth that I need to update for y'all as well as Avacyn. And I don't know if there's anything else that I need to film that is that is like updated. Um but yeah, I this was this is a deck that I'm super happy with, but I'm always tweaking. You know, there's always cool little things that I want to like try and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you guys like this updated version and I will see you guys in my next video.